Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm speaking to you from Porto in, in Portugal, in this amazing cellar, which you'll hear more about. Um, uh, to an historic occasion, um, the launch of Dictador's most recent collaboration, um, a finished rum in, now in, in port, port pipes. I'm going to introduce, I have three masters um, with me, uh, and I'm going to introduce them in a moment. Um, could I ask you to make sure that your, your, your sound is muted? Um, if you want to ask questions, then put your hand up, or you can do it to this, uh, what's it called? The chat, 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 box. Box, yeah. chat box, so you can type a question in. Um, um, and the second thing is that hopefully that some of you, if not all, will have uh, received um, a glass and a, certainly a sample of this amazing liquid. Um, so, to introduce, first of all, to kick off, um, this is these, these whole Masters, the, the two Masters series from Dictador, is a collaboration between the, the master distiller and blender of Dictador rum in Colombia, Cartagena, um, and, uh, and, and another master distiller or blender. In this case, the first person I want to introduce is Dirk, um, who has, uh, has made, he's, he's, he's the, he, the, uh, the, 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 the report that he makes is generally recognized as being absolutely top quality. And, the, um, and so this is a collaboration between these, these two masters. So would you just like to say hello to, to the, the, the troops? So, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Dirk Nieport. I'm the fifth generation in my family. Um, my son Daniel and my son Marco is working with me. My daughter, not yet. She's a bit young. Um, but I'm actually going to be a grandfather, so I'm sorry I'm very emotional about that. Um, we are a family business since 1842. And uh, in the beginning, we were port, uh, only port. And uh, actually, Aguardiente Velha was a very important thing in our business. In, in fact, in Portugal, I think we were more famous for our uh, spirits than for our ports. But we were negociants, so we would uh, buy the ports from small growers and then uh, after the harvest, bring it down to Villa Nova de Gaia, where we are now, which is a theme we might talk later about, uh, the importance of Villa Nova de Gaia, and uh, age the wines. In the meantime, the wine side has become really important for us. Uh, we, 75% is uh, wine these days. Uh, but not because the port went down, it's just uh, there were amazing changes in the Doro uh, in the last couple of years, uh, 30 years. And uh, Doro is, is now, apart from being, in my opinion, the most beautiful wine area in the world, I know I shouldn't say that, but uh, it's not politically it's correct, but, uh, but uh, well, that's the way I feel, so that's the way it is. Um, it is an amazing area with 45,000 hectares, and um, there is a huge potential uh, for wine as much as for port. But I think we are here for a combination of uh, rum and tradition of ports and knowledge and, and so on. So, um, I don't know. And so the second master, Hanan Para who is also your, what, fifth generation? Third, 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 third generation. Yes, yes, um, making, making rum in Cartagena in, in Colombia. Um, and so in due course, you'll tell us all about the, you know, the idea and so on, but of the course. collaboration. So would you like to just Thank you, thank yourself? you, Charlie. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. This is a very important day for us. Um, as you may know, uh, we have launched already nine different uh, two masters with different growers or distillers around the Europe and, and America. And uh, today, it, for me, is a very, very special day because the whole concept of the two masters uh, from the beginning was trying to uh, bring out 
uh, our oldest rums and our fine rums to the world. And we were always thinking how to bring this out and make it special, make it different from, the, from, from other producers. And uh, always we were thinking on bringing some barrels from different areas of the world to do our finishing in our premises. But in one moment, we got this fantastic idea and we came out that why don't we send the rum to our uh, uh, to the different producers around the world, the people that instead of buying the barrel from them and bringing it to Colombia, why don't we send the rum to them and, and age and finish this? And additionally, involving this second master, which is uh, what really makes unique yeah. the, the product, because somebody else is going to treat the product for a few uh, months or years or whatever they decide, because at the end of the day, uh, our idea was to give the rum to this person and give the carte blanche, says, okay, you are open to do whatever you want to do with our rums and bring out whatever you feel uh, good to, to produce with our rums. So I had the opportunity to visit uh, Dirk and his temple. When I came the first time in this place, I knew immediately that this was going to be one of the best collaborations that we can have in the two masters uh, 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 sessions. And, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's one of the biggest moments for me because port casks are famous because the, the, many of the producers around the world want to have these casks in their premises to age or to continue or to finish their products. So port for me was like an icon in, 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 in this process. And all this together makes this so unique and so privileged that I believe that this is a kind of alternative investment. These this rums can come up to a different category, to absolutely new uh, uh, category in the world of spirits. So, Charlie, I think that we should jump and listen and to And who Ken. better to talk about that than my dear friend Ken Greer, master of the quake, so he's the third master uh, today, um, who was formerly chairman of the Macallan Distillery uh, and really b developed this category of um, super premium, what do you call it, investment? Investment grade uh, in spirits. Yeah. I mean, and this is a breakthrough is it, in terms of rum, it's, it, it, bringing rum up to that sort of... It's an extraordinary day for us, Charlie, because to be here in um, these wonderful cellars in Porto, which have been here since 1842, with um, quite the most investment grade rum in the world, um, and in fact, the most peerless port in the world. To be in the presence of Dirk with his uh, amazing um, rum, uh, it's amazing port and amazing family here and of course Hernan with the legacy that you bring. I think it's amazing, it's fantastic because you're bringing this incredible port, probably the best and most recognised port in the world, with um, this very scarce, very beautiful, I think I'm right in saying that there's no, there's no other rum maker that has such... No. Old, old rums as, 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 as you, would that You're be right, the case? Yeah. I, I think that the, the, especially the very old ones, and on which we don't have a big inventory, but we have to, have the, to, to happen to have it. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that's why, because it's a small inventory, because we don't have, the, we cannot produce again a 71 or 74 yeah, that we sent to, to, to Porto. The uniqueness of it is even higher, because this, this won't be happening again, mm. ever. So mm -hmm. this, this, this release with 620 bottles is the first release, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, of course, the first release always is the, the best one and the biggest well, one in terms well, of... Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Sorry, Ken, I interrupted you. No, I think it's a real pleasure to be here today, Charlie, because, um, you know, you have two dynasties here. You have Dirk with um, fifth generation, with uh, Nieport, with this incredibly crafted, beautiful, elegant... You know, port and also a very big portfolio now of superb wines. And you have this incredible cache of amazing quality, oldest in the world rums. So I think bringing this together, Charlie, is a really exciting day for me. And I think as much as anything, it's not only talking about the story here, it's about drinking the liquid. The liquid is sublime. Mm. To me, it is one mm. of the most amazing And one of the things that will be very apparent is the passion with which yeah. these masters created this amazing, amazing... I think it is about craft, it's about mm. legacy, it's about passion, yeah. and it's yeah. a truly amazing liquid that we're going to try today. Yeah. 
Um, Hannah, would, would, would you like to say anything more about the, 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 um, the idea behind it? The, the, it would probably be quite useful for the viewers to, see, to hear more. What gave you the idea? Well, I think you covered it, to, to be honest. The, uh... Well, what, the idea was at the beginning to, to find this uh, second producer and second master that wanted yes. to join us in, the, in, the, in, in this uh, uh, project. And uh, we start talking to different ones. So we went to France and we start doing some uh, partnership with Cognac, uh, with Hardy Cognac. We did with, uh, with uh, Le Leclerc Brillant Champagne in Champagne. We did it with, uh, with the Chateau d'Arche in the, in the uh, wine, uh, sweet wines in, in Sauternes wines in, in Sauternes, yeah. and so on. And then we jumped to Scotland and we did with the Ken Fracas, which is also a family owned, uh, last family owned distillery in Scotland. Then we jumped to the US and we did with the with the uh, Barton 1974. Uh, yeah. So we started to find that the other masters were also intrigued with this project because it's mm. it's unique. It's uh, nobody else unique can in rum. Uh, obviously, in, yeah. in the whiskey industry, can the uh, finishing. Well, was, I, I, was I, th I think it's interesting, Charlie, because the market for super premium spirits is just exploding. Mm. And particularly, I think, post-COVID, people have begun to have time to consider, to think, to purchase, to indulge their pleasure in this area. And to me, it's very much about provenance. Mm -hmm. It's about storytelling. It's about extraordinarily differentiated um, liquid. Um, so I think we have all of that here. What we're finding now at the minute is quite remarkable because we have a real, a real synergy here between Nipport, who of course, you know, have the most expensive port in the world, you know, the wonderful Lalique bottled product from 1863 that sold for $140,000 cool. for one yeah. bottle. Yep. You have the most incredible cache of very, very old and rare rums in the world from Dictador. And I think these come together brilliantly. If you look at the recent history, you know, um, the Lalique Generations bottle, that set a new world record of 30,000 pounds for a bottle recently. Um, an amazing 37,000 pound cask sale from Sotheby's. You're finding um, you know, real craft, real legacy, real connoisseurship. And to me, this is an incredibly creative partnership. It's something that has a very compelling and interesting story. It has amazing scarcity. I go back to what Hernan said, only 620 bottles of this wonderful release available. And, you know, within this, we have the most phenomenal rum. And I don't really want to stand too much between us and tasting this amazing liquid, because it is one of the best liquids I've tasted in the last couple I, of years. I would like to ask you, Dirk, the, the, w w when you was, were, were approached about this, how did you see, how did you approach your selection of casts, the casts to, to, uh, to uh, re-rack into? Well, the, the first thing is, uh, well, I tasted some of the rums and uh, I liked the concept, I liked the quality, I liked what they are doing. Um, and, and to invite me to be part of this project uh, was a big honor. Um, it, it did make me think quite a lot because rum, in a way, um, is, is something which, particularly the wines we are talking, well, the rums we're talking about, 71, 74, 78, and 80. Yes. Um, we're talking about something which makes my life a lot easier than if I would have to work with something youngish. Uh, so the quality, the base quality is fantastic. But it poses a problem. It, it's, a, it's a rum with a lot of identity, a lot of concentration, a lot of richness. And, and so thinking in a Nipport mind, um, there's two ways. We can make it even more interesting, more powerful, more this uh, to impress the world. But um, if you knew me a little bit better, uh, you would know that probably I wouldn't go that way. And uh, so I thought, uh, let's polish, you know, fine tune this diamond. And, and uh, the diamond is fantastic. But 
let's make it even better. And so uh, the idea was to really um, make it a bit more austere. It sounds, it's all, sounds all wrong what I'm saying because this is unusual, but um, a bit more austere, less uh, big, but more expressive, uh, less fruity, but let's fresher, use the French, fresher, this morning, and, and this bouquet thing. You wait, just wait till you taste this. It's, it's, a, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so, um, how do you get there? Okay, so what we did was we made uh, some different barrels um, to see how, how we get there. Uh, and so we have many options, but this is an option of a selection of two barrels that we, um, we used half of each barrel uh, for its preciseness, its elegance, its finesse, but so these I think what, 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 what is important about Nieport, and I think this is what we achieve, is the balance and harmony in the end product. And mm. I must confess that uh, tasting it now, which we are not. Uh, <laughs> We're about to. Yes. Don't worry. It's, it's a bit boring. Uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's that it's so precise, it's so clean, it's so um, strong without being heavy. It's so expressive without being, you know, over the top. And, and I think for my, for my part, um, it, 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 the objective is totally where I wanted it to be. And, and I think this is part of uh, the great idea that uh, when we talked about it, I asked him, uh, so what do we do? How do we do? And he said, no, you do. This is what you have, mm. do whatever you want. And I said, yeah, but uh, you have an idea. I said, no, no, I don't yeah. have an idea. <laughs> you should have the idea. So in a way, he put uh, the risk and uh, <laughs> all the responsibility in my hands. Yes. But, but I think this is uh, uh, more than just the result being good. I think this is just a little step in maybe something that yep. I hope we will we develop and, and make something together in the future and understanding the combination and what we can do. But in any case, even if we wouldn't do anything in the future, which I think we will, um, it's, it's a fantastic learning process. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For but, me, yeah. it's... Sorry, is, but I have it, to say that I was not in risk. The first time I came in and I met him and I, I saw his passion around his products and, uh, and around the port. And, and the future of the of the industry here, I knew that this yeah. was going to end as well, good as it's Well, we've got a little film, haven't we, about Wait. your your encounter, your ah, meeting? Yes, we have a film. It, it, yeah. It's interesting, Charlie. Just an observation. I think this is one of the most intelligent, subtle, and perfectly balanced projects I've ever seen in my life. I think the care wow. and attention um, to take the beauty that is dictated or wrong, and as you said, Dirk, to polish the diamond in a very subtle and beautifully balanced way is a real credit to both of you masters in terms of the end result here. Well, the end result will... will so now, is it charge okay your that glasses. I pour this so, while so, we watch the Yeah, yeah, pour that while we're... Large ones, please. The, they, uh, they have already something... Yeah, we have already. Yeah. We don't. The, the, can we run the, the little movie? Thanks. We are here at the beautiful River Duero Valley in Portugal. We are entering to the new port, our new partner for the Two Master series. So please follow me. Hey, my friend. Hola. Hola. Bienvenido. Muchas well, gracias. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. You made it. Finally. Fantastic. Duero. Fantastic weather. Thank you very much. Let me show you a little bit around. Perfect. Thank you. We are here in the first demarcated wine area in the world. 1756. Tadoro is, is special. Uh, we're talking about 45,000 hectares and it's rough. It's all steep hills. I'd like to say this is the most beautiful wine area in the world. The amazing thing is that it's the area of the famous port, but 
there's a huge potential for making white wine and red wine. Talking about vineyards, they go from 880 to 800 meters in height, north-facing, south-facing vineyards. Uh, the sky is the limit. Well, the port was established in 1842, and uh, I'm the fifth generation, and my kids are there, so there is a sixth generation. Dirk, thank you very much for having us here with you. I would like to introduce you with our project, the Two Masters from Dictador. And the whole idea of the project of the Two Masters is that there's a real interaction between two different masters from two different products. I will send you our rum. It's going to be uh, around 40 years, different casks and different strengths. There's a real interaction from you, which is the most important thing for us. Well, thank you very much. And I love the idea of me being able to play. This is my favorite drink after rum. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I hope rum is going to be the second one for you. Exactly, yes. <laughs> This is our lodge, original lodge from... The original one. It was built in 1837. 1837, amazing. Uh, it's older than Nipport. Nipport was established in 1842. 1842. But uh, we only bought this recently, uh, 30 years ago. Okay. This is like going to church. Ah, oh, this is you so You hear beautiful. some noises, you hear some cars. That's why it's wonderful to come on a Sunday, you don't hear anything. anything. When you come here, you, you sort of have to slow down and adapt to Slowness. You know, our warehouse, we have a sign, quiet please, Rome aging. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> this is our tasting room. Well, it's empty, but this was in 1863. 1863. As you see, it was good. <laughs> no less. <laughs> no, it's empty. I'm too sorry. It's okay. Our first signed barrel. Yes. This is uh, fantastic and it's a really huge honor for us to be your first warehouse. And I know from now that it's, it will be amazing when it comes out from your Let's your do barrels. something about it. Thank you. Fantastic. So this is beautiful here. Port is the soul of the company. Of course. But today um, the wine side is 70% of our business. We have to think of the Dodo. The Dodo. As, as as the place the where region. the port is, and, and we're not about the port in general. Okay. We have different sizes, like this big one uh, and the pipes, uh, but all the ports we have, they go through wood, one time or another. I think with rum, is a little bit the same thing. Actually, it's exactly the same. Wow, this is incredible. I changed my word from amazing. <laughs> This is in my family since 1842. Since then, uh, we are in this place here. What vintage are you? I am 72. Oh, no, you know, when you are in a port house, you don't answer the truth. You say 1945 or 27 or something like that. Okay, okay. Because okay. We, we feel I was, obliged to open something. I was, I was lying something. because I want to feel younger. <laughs> ah, exactly. I'm 48, 1948. <laughs> you see, that, now that that's makes sense. Thank you very much for your hospitality. I am really, really impressed with the fantastic location, with the historic place you have. And uh, I'm really happy that our rooms are going to be in your hands. I really trust your capability and I hope to see in the near future what's going to happen with them. What I have tasted from you was brilliant, fantastic and let's see what we can do. Incredible. Thank you very much also for this 1972 port which is my, my birthday year. Well it's better for people than for the port but, <laughs> yes, but it's Thank okay. You. It's okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Let's work on the future. Absolutely. Cheers. Isn't that, an, isn't that a lovely wee film? You know, a story of, of, a, of a collaboration and, um, you know, respect on both, both, both sides. Now then, we've come to the, the moment where we look at the, this extraordinary product. You'll see that its color is a sort of ruby red, 
but the nose is, it's not as sweet. It's still got, I would say it's still got a rum identity, but masked to some extent with red fruits, red, we were talking about red currants mm. earlier. It's, it's a slightly sour note. We, I think we said, Charlie, there was some marzipan there. Oh, there yeah. There was a little bit of yeah. dark chocolate, some coffee on the back end of that. You know, it's a very, very rich and complex confection. Well, I, w I was thinking, the, we were tasting it the, this morning, and, the, um, and I, I had tasted it previously, as a matter of fact, and the, uh, there, 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 there is a delicious sweet. It's a, it's, it's a marzi little cake of marzipan with a walnut on the top. They're called yeah. marzipan walnuts, I think, and there's a walnut on the top. And then it's glazed with, with um, toffee, hard, hard, brittle toffee, and then dipped in dark chocolate. And I was getting all this. I was getting almond on the nose. It was almost like almond paste initially, the top notes sort of almond paste or nutmeg, almond oil. Nutmeg and the dryness of the... And then uh, beneath the that are these, these red fruits and so on. It's almost red currants and damson. Exactly, through there. exactly, exactly. And then through that, right down, and then you've got this coffee base. It's extraordinary. It's, it's almost like coffee grounds. And almost like a little bit of um, burnt caramel. Yep, the yep, back yep, end. yep, 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 yep. You know, with, um, absolutely, absolutely. With 80% um, dark chocolate, you know, within this. What I like about it is I think it's, you smell it and you know it's rum. So we're not trying to be cognac or whiskey no, or this no, or that, no, no. it's Although, not. Yeah, well, so that, I it's, mean, that's it's very authentic, but it's generous, it's highly concentrated, so it, it's, it's big in a way, but it's, the nose is extremely expressive. And mm. I think the key word here is, and this was the objective, is that it's, it's very fresh. It's not yeah. fruity. There is fruits, there is this, there is that, all the things you mentioned, but it is vibrant and yeah. it's fresh. And, and when you taste it, it obviously has concentration yeah. and body, yeah. it's uh, but, but, but it's, it's not sweet and not heavy yeah. in the finish and it's very long. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, there is, I think, Dirk, a sophistication and elegance, elegance. Absolutely. a cleverness about this. Yeah, it's a, there's a combination that, of freshness. Really that, that was the, the you know, the polishing focus. of the diamond was to give it length, yeah, depth. give it lightness, but give it depth mm. without being more heavy and so on and so on. An incredible balance in there. Mm. Yep. Yeah, yep. there's tannins in there, there's richness, but in a very clever, light touch. It's, it's, it's very funny because it's, it's a very dangerous um, thing. Yes, um, very easy to drink. In a way, you, you want to smell it and you want to smell it, so you, you don't have to taste it because uh, the more you smell it, the more you get. But then again, when you taste it, yum, yum. Yeah, you want, delicious. You delicious. want delicious. more. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's very long, but it, it's not something that is heavy and, and you say, yeah. oh, you don't want it? No. This, yeah. it, this, it, you feel like, ah, oh, you want more. It's got a very um, drying finish. It has, to yeah. me, it sits beautifully within the canon of the Dick to Draw Two Masters products because it's very different. But it's because nice. you have this beautiful dry quality yeah, at the end. The, the balance very of, sophisticated. Balance of primary taste. It's, it's, it's sweet. Structured. And then yeah. that, that, that slightly sour note. Yeah. Um, and then drying towards the, towards the end. I think yeah. the key here is... is I was sitting next to Robert Mondavi uh, a long time ago, and he was telling me that a port of ours was particularly good, and i make the, sh the story short. And he said, ah, oh, this is very good. And I said, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, he, he, he thought I was not taking him serious, which I wasn't, uh, <laughs> because he kept on saying this is very good. And then he said, uh, you know, a great sweet wine is uh, dry. No, he said, great sweet wine is sweet. And I said, ah, I agree on that. But no, a great sweet wine is sweet in the beginning, but it's dry in the finish. I understand. And, and, and I think what we have here, yeah. we're not talking about the sweet wine, but 
it's such a generous thing from the beginning. The rum uh, was bigger than what it is now. Yes. And what I like, and, and this why it reminds me of this thing of uh, Robin Mondavi, is that you get all the generosity of the base rum, but it's so fine-tuned. Um, what is it? Is it the aged in the barrel? Yes, maybe because part of it was in a white port uh, barrel. Um, it, it just, like there is a broom in the end of the palate that makes it dry mm. and, and astringent. And astringent. Very slightly so astringent. So there's tannin, yeah, there's structure. Mm. And, and in the finish, it's, it's just really long. But the, the problem is then when you swallow it, mm, it stays and stays, but then ah, yeah, yeah. you want more. It's, exactly. it's not this Very boring, nice. sweet, no, uh, no, it's not. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, not a finish. Most and rums are, are quite uh, boring and sweet, um, and and this is the opposite. Uh, and the, but again, I mean, working with the base material you gave me, it's easy to make something good. It's difficult and, to and make Herman, something wrong. And Herman, how is this different from the Dictador <sighs> rums that you normally taste? Is it actually actually when when you come to this? Uh, it's, it's, it's a fantastic mixture when you when you try your port and and, and uh, individually, you can see that it, it, there's something on top of the rum that gives a little bit of like order to it and uh, and, and and completes it very 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 nice. That's why I think also worldwide everybody wants to use the podcast to do the finishing because they are really giving and really uh, supporting some 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 specific areas yeah. but then, um, as we know can in regard to whiskey a lot of the port finished scotch malts they can they can get it wrong so if you leave it too well, long or or well, it's I, I, I think it's interesting to me charlie because you know i love whiskey as you know and really i'm very very lucky to taste <laughs> some incredibly good whiskies but i think this is every bit as good as any prestige whiskey I've ever tasted, because well, I agree with you. Absolutely. Because to be honest, looking here, you know, coldly, um, at under a under a thousand euros, yeah, you know, this is basically nine hundred and sixty euros a bottle for only six hundred and twenty in the world for this first release, um, compared to many other fantastic Grand Cru scotches. I think this is fabulous. I think the delivery is outstanding. I think the cleverness of the construction of the beauty of the rum, the elegance and balance that you've added, Dirk, there with Nieport gives a real thoroughbred spirit that for me is not only something to savour and enjoy, but also for me, Dictador is getting in at the ground floor of the next generation of investment grade spirits. This is something to savor, to collect, to invest in and to enjoy. And it's a truly, truly wonderful confection. And I really appreciate the hard work that's gone in from both of you, from the wonderful spirit from you. And then I know you talked a bit about, you know, there being the column still, which gives you the meat. Yes. The alembic, which gives you almost the fat, so it's like a very fine wagwa steak. So there's an amazing base material. But I think, Dirk, the sophistication, the balance, the subtlety that you've introduced by the use of the port pipes here is extraordinary. And this, to me, is one of the greatest spirits I've tasted in the last couple of years. It's amazing and incredibly scarce. I think it's an amazing liquid within this and something to enjoy. Well, thank you for the trust. Um, thank you for the honor. But I, I think, again, you know, uh, I live, I come from a world that uh, is the opposite of our real world today. Uh, people think in two months, uh, I think in 20 years. Yeah. Um, and the port world is a slow thing and I'm happy that it is like that. But uh, I think here again was the patience of 
talking in the beginning. He says it was obvious when he met me. Yes, but you know, it takes time and and trust and then patience. And and I'm I'm particularly happy also with the result because um, I truly like this. Uh, and I agree with you, this is as good as anything else um, that I have tasted. But more than just being as good as anything else, is it's true to where it comes from. So the basis, what we call in the wine, the terroir, blah, 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 um, the, authentic, the base authentic is, is the same. Still there, so, yes. Uh, and, and this is actually something I, I want to further work with you because I think we go, we can go even further. Yes, yes. Explain that because you've got you've got some more left. This is the first release. Yep. And you're going to continue to to m mature in in you, you, you're in the other remaining casks to produce maybe a second release and third release. Well, I, I see it as a adventure. Mm -hmm. um, well. It was an invitation, which I'm happy, but um, when I get invited to do something like this, I go all the way. Uh, but I think what is really interesting is, is this is the first step, but we have many other possibilities. Um, and I think this is a learning curve for me, mm -hmm. but also for, for you. Me, of course. Um, and Again, time will make it even better. And I think we will find a way to see what we like for the future. And um, in the beginning, the logic thing would to use a, a, a barrel that, is, that had a very old port. Uh, but then I thought, why, why do we have to give more of what is there already? I mean, again, uh, the base material is so good and so old and so concentrated that my first thought was, of course, let's put uh, into a barrel of something really old. Yes, it will make it even more impressive and this and that, but this is not my philosophy at Nipot. So uh, we have one of those barrels um, and I think probably uh, the second edition uh, will be a, a more complicated blend of different things. Uh, this is more what I think a rum should be like, but then we can go... Mm, mm, mm. And again, we have well, to be one patient. Of, and one wait. of the things I've learned, I've learned from you, Dirk, over the, la over the last couple of days is the, that w the, the, the casts you're looking for for, for maturing port are, are inactive. You, you were saying that you know the, 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 the casks in this amazing w warehouse um, are maybe 90 years old, some of them. Yeah, when I started working with my father in 87, I made a try to find out how old were the casks and they were average 60 years old. Uh, and this is 30 years ago. Yeah, there we and are. We, we haven't bought any new casks since then. Yeah. So um, you're looking for, you say, unlike in Scotch whisky, you're not looking for active casks who are no, going to contribute no. flavour. You're, you're looking for a neutral cask, but then, of course, the walls of this cask will be saturated with, with your port. Yep. So, and the environment is maybe also important. Indeed. Um, but I, I, we definitely don't want anything from the cask giving to the wine. We want uh, the wine in the cask, uh, in the environment. And of course, it makes a difference if there was a young port, uh, which is a little bit what we did, uh, is, is we have young port, old port, very old port, uh, white port. Um, and so we have totally different scenarios. So we took barrels that had fantastic ports, but totally different. We drained the wine out and then we put the rum without washing it. Um, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and so um, the cask is important because of what was in there, but also where, where it is. Yeah. Uh, and 
Yeah, again, um, it depends what one wants. Uh, if I wanted to impress you all, I would just make something with a really old thing and make it sweet, and then it would be yeah, even it sweeter. Would, it, yeah, but yeah. I think I wanted I wanted the opposite, uh, and and that's why I think this is so good for me. Is, is that he he said you do whatever you want. Uh, and I said, yeah, but what do you think? And I said, I don't think, I don't want to think. I'm mm. happy to taste with you, but you decide. And so mm. it's interesting to taste now the results. Mm. Mm. But mm. when I mm. say, Talking what would which. you do? He says, no, I'm not going to tell you what I would do. Of course. I th I think uh, yeah. and, 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 of course, I, in the end, he does tell me what he would do. But this is the learning true. process. This is, a, this is really what really makes I it interesting. It's, I think it's really interesting, Charlie, for me, is you're taking two thoroughbreds, you know, with um, Newport, the best port in the world, in my humble opinion, Dictador, the best and rarest and oldest rum in the world, you're combining those two. I think the second thing is the creativity about getting to something that has balance, sophistication, dryness, and an interesting um, perspective as a product. The next thing I think within this is, I think this is really the ground floor of investment grade rum. I think this is an incredible product that's beautiful to taste. Well, I think that's all very welcome, but I'd rather people drank it than, 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 yeah, than invest it and right. stash it in the bank. And to me, Charlie, that under a thousand euros a bottle compared to you know 5,000 euros for many um, scotches, I think this is a fabulous, fabulous liquid that should be enjoyed. A bargain. And actually, I think, actually, I think the risk of the investment is the urge to drink it. <laughs> well, I suppose, <laughs> but that's a, it's a good investment because you can drink it. But, but, the, but the amazing thing is actually in the glass because you have the base liquid with the complexity, the richness and the character mm. of the finest rum in the world, the Dictador, mm. but then you have the sophistication the balance and the subtlety of what Dirk has done with mm, this. Mm, and I mm. really just hope that the people that are tuning in today well, let's ask, the let's quality ask. of mm. what we have. Yep. Well, we'll have to hear the any, any comments? Please Hello, do. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, we had a lot of very lovely comments in the chat box on the rum itself. So thank you very much. And we do have one question for Dirk uh, about the barrels that you aged the rum in. Can you tell us more about those? Um, yes, we, we have um, 10 barrels, was it? Uh, 20 uh, barrels. 20. 20. Uh, yeah, yeah, which yeah. turned into 10 pounds. Ah, of course, because of the size 10 of the yep. yes. so, yeah. uh, so what we, what we did uh, was really try to um, learn, well, I'm talking about myself, but uh, the idea was to learn um, as much as possible about what does rum want, how does it interact. And uh, in this case, um, we have uh, a barrel of a younger port and a 10-year-old white, um, because my point was to uh, neutralize a little bit the sweetness of the spirits and then I, I thought giving it a bit of youth uh, obviously with time would make it uh, um, more approachable, more sexy, more fine, more elegant but uh, we in fact we have um, 10 barrels which are totally different uh, uh, this was a choice because I wanted to be a bit against the fact of making something just sweet and big and impressive. Uh, and uh, uh, I must confess that I, I particularly like it, uh, and the result particularly, because uh, I only tasted it today, the final result. We made blends, we made trials, but uh, I haven't tasted it uh, totally done. And, um, and I think this is as good as it gets. At least it's pretty much what I wanted. Uh, and we, we, we can play with uh, the future, which is the nice thing. Absolutely. Yeah, great. 
I think we're saying, Charlie, that this is the first release in what may be up to five releases, because as you said, oh, really? you know, yeah. 20 casts, which become 10 port pipes, which become, you know, five releases. And I think, Dirk, what you've done with the 1971, 1974, 1978, 1998 rums, you know, bringing those together, putting those as, as an assemblage into two different casks, and then recombining those gives yep. us an incredible subtlety, complexity, sophistication, and dryness that I've never seen in a rum before. And then, um, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but uh, when you look at the color and when you smell it, uh, I find it very impressive how pure, how clean, how defined. Uh, it's, it's a surgical precision. Uh, it's just, and it's yet, extraordinary yet, fragrant. yet it's you know, rum. It, mm. it's, it doesn't mm. want to pretend to be anything else. Mm. Absolutely. Maybe it'd be great to get some questions. Any other questions that we have? From, mm. Yes, you know, we do have more here. questions. We have got one here for Hernan. Uh, first of all, can you please confirm the age of the rums? And also, how did you settle on 48%? Was it very different from the natural strength? Uh, can you repeat? So, so the, the, the different rums. rums, which different rums did yeah, you we, use we, we send, the we sent three different, the, three different rums, uh, 71, 74, 78 and 80. And uh, that's the moment that we distill the, 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 the rums and start aging, same, same, same year. Uh, so for the 71 is 40, uh, 41, 42 years already, 51, yeah. Yeah, the oldest one. Yeah. And, um, sorry, 51. 50, 51, 51, 51, sorry, yeah, 51 years. So, uh, and the strength of the casks uh, at the end, all of them start losing. And uh, different strengths will be, I think the 80 was around 60, 60, and the youngest was around 50. Uh, so I would have to check what, that. Once, you, once you've vatted them all together, you then, the, 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 you registered the strength, which happened to be 48. Yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So it's natural strength. Yes, of course, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Good. Great. Any more questions, Marie? Thank you. Yes, we do. We've got another question. How long has it been finished in the port barrels? Good question. So uh, <coughs> I think we, we, we mentioned before it was around two years, but it's a little bit less. It's 16 months to 18 months that we uh, did the job here in, 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 uh, in port. So it's 18 months. I think there's um, something about the subtlety of just enough to give it the balance of yeah, sophistication this, without overcoming the base rum? It's not a decision like this month. It's, it's something that yeah. mm -hmm. looks every <coughs> time to time to check, to come to the place he wants. That's what would be very interesting in the, these, these on, ongoing, the ones that are still maturing, yep. because the, 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 the make come a time, I mean, even if you've got relatively inert casks where they, the, 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 the flavors are take, taking over, you're losing the rum character and you're getting too much port character. I don't know. I don't Perhaps, know. Yep. yeah. I think it'd be yeah. interesting to see the effect mm. of oxidation, the effect yes, of aging. Yes, indeed, indeed. As you move through the different releases, so I think it'll be fascinating. Mm. I, I love this. I think there's a structure, <coughs> there's a, a richness, and yet um, a subtlety that comes through in this I've never seen before. The, the drying effect that you talked about in the mouth, Charlie, is yep. very unusual. It is, me. well, it is, it is, very in, in both rum and in port. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, there's probably a little bit of tannin in it uh, from the uh, from the wood cask. No, no yeah. from the cask uh, of of the younger port. Mm. Um, I don't know, but maybe. Mm. Mm. So, so, more questions? What else do you have, guys? Yes, we have another question for Hernan. How do you keep your rums in wood or in steel? In wood. <laughs> That's a <an> simple answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next. Perhaps a question for Ken. How much do you expect will be bought for investment? Well, I think it's a great question, Marie, because I was speaking to my colleagues at Dictador today, and we reckon that the, um, the price of Dictador Two Masters has increased by at least fourfold in the last five years. So I think what we're seeing is an incredible V-shaped curve, you know, post-COVID, 
you know, people are really getting into the market for investment grade spirits aggressively. I think we're seeing prices rising. I think we're finding that consumers now have residual capital. They are purchasing hard goods, and that includes uh, wonderful um, objets d'art like the products we talk about here. So I think the whole market is solidifying. Prices are increasing. And the thing I would say genuinely is twofold. Um, one is that at 960 euros a bottle for only 620 bottles, I think this is a steal. And by the way, can I put my hand up for one? Um, the second thing I would say around this is that, you know, you're buying something, as Charlie said, that is an amazingly affordable, elegant drink to enjoy with your friends or something to begin to get in the ground floor of collecting. And I think there is certainly arbitrage here for the future in terms of investment grade. I do believe that we've had a fantastic run and continue to have a good run in investment grade scotch. I think the market is now opening up. I think rum is the next logical sector to really grow and develop. I think that under 100, uh, 1,000 euros here and 960 euros, it's an amazing steal compared to very many old scotches. And I think it's something to invest in, something to drink and enjoy, and something to celebrate as a fantastic creative collaboration. The two fingerprints on the bottle, oh, yeah, I, I think, are incredibly Can interesting. Show it shows the, the, the friendship, it shows the passion, it shows the mutual collaboration of two amazing masters. And I think this takes the craft of collaboration in spirits to a different level, to really appreciate the skills of both of the masters, to see the warehousing in these fantastic, damp, old, really venerated cellars here, I think is a privilege. And I think we've come up with a, a genuine walker bar here, Charlie. I think it's incredible mm. what we have. Mm. I agree. Mm. Next question. Thank you. We actually don't have any more questions, just a lot of compliments on the rum. So congratulations. Good. Any comments on flavor from the yes, audience? Yes, lots of comments on flavor, actually. We've had uh, one saying, Ellie, saying it's surprisingly spicy. We've got from Lucy that there is um, a lot of uh, chocolate and black cherry finish. Yep. Henry mentions it's a uh, balsamic quality, like a really old colata. I'm thinking I might pronounce this incorrect. No, it was good. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have got from Drew Mayville, hello. Um, a grapefruit note, thick and sweet molasses to balance with the dried fruit and chocolates. So um, we yeah. Of, uh, positive comments. It's a slightly tart note, the, the, the great grapefruit note. I, I wouldn't identify it as grapefruit, but it is yeah, slightly sour. It's great, yeah. Hello, bounce. Drew, by the oh, way. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else? No more questions here, no. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much. We've, we've, we've had a great time. Ch Ch Charlie, yes. well, ch tell us, you know, you obviously taste a range of liquids across many different categories. You know, coming into this fresh, what do you think of the liquid? Give us your Well, I mean, well, as you know, I mean, I mean, most of my work is done with, is, with Scotch whiskey, and particularly Scotch malt. Oh, yeah, well, if you can bribe me with another dram, then I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say even nicer things. The... Um, but this really, you know, I'm not an expert on rum nor on, um, nor on port, but just evaluating this as, as a, a drink, as a liquid, um, and in, employing the same language and the same analysis as one would with, or I would, with, with, with a, a, a particular malt whiskey, um, it shapes up extraordinarily well. I mean, the colour is terrific. The nose is terrific. It, and it changes in the glass, do you know. The, 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 there's all sorts of layers revealed, which is an indication of age. And then the, then the taste is, is, is fantastic. The, um, well...
yeah, you see this balance of primary tastes. The sweetness, then slightly sour, then drying. Gorgeous. Um, lengthy, medium length finish, I would say. Some spice in the finish that somebody else picked up on. Um, going on. Um, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge drink. It really um, is. It's I a, mean, the thing for me is, it's actually a fantastic treat to enjoy. It's something to lay down. Oh, it is, it is, it is. And, the, and ooh, it's, yeah. some, I, I, it's, it's almost as right. I would describe um, a product to buy one of to drink and to buy one <laughs> of to keep. <laughs> you know, which is... Yeah. So I, yeah. I take it, given the white suit, Charlie, it's I, a man from Del Monte who <laughs> says yes. I, man I, from Del Monte I, says I invited yes. this uh, Beatrice. Uh, she's <laughs> working with us. Um, I have to... She has to be close to me because of the, the microphone. microphone. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry about well, we that. We have no COVID here, just right. so you know. So, uh, so Beatrice, yeah. what do you think? Yes. What do you, what you practice? Have you, have you noticed and tasted it before today? No. No. Yeah. But I'm happy now. <laughs> After two Trust sessions. It. You have to Taste speak it. louder or come closer to me. So decide what you want to do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So she, she's been in the, wow. the world of wine for a long time. Uh, Beatrice. Not that long, because I'm quite young. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what do you think? So, so give us your it's perspective. Beautiful. It's super complex. But I, now I get what you were saying, you know, and it has also that butterscotch note. Yeah, yes. yeah. Burnt toffee, we were getting. Yeah, the, yeah. We, it's extraordinary because it changes from butterscotch to burnt toffee wow. to... To, yeah, yeah. You know, in, in, it, it, it's funny because in port, you know, there's a, a story that people tell for a long time mm. that, you know, ladies up in the Dodo Valley would use old Tony ports as a perfume, you know. To, oh, uh, really? You know, really? Because it's, it was so intense and, you know, this you definitely would, has that character. You so know. you would use that as a perfume? <laughs> it, de it depends hey, on yo. the situation. Maybe, maybe, maybe we have, we'll uh, have another opportunity here. Yes. No, yes. Vaporize. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, I'm glad that you invited me to come here because this is, you know, it's not just a men's world. You know, this is kind of a very special rum and very, very complex. And even a young person like me <laughs> <laughs> can enjoy properly. So, 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 so Beatrice, d do you pick up the Neport notes on that, the rum? That's what I was just saying, that, you know, it definitely has some of the Tony, the old Tony Port's character. And as we were talking earlier today, Neport in terms of style compared to the other port houses has something which is quite distinctive. It, it starts uh, rich and, and you get the sugar, but then it finishes dry yeah. with a yeah. lovely acidity. And, you know, I was, I was actually afraid that I would taste this and it would be like a powerhouse. And, and because, you know, the rum has aged quite a bit and, you know, it would have a strong character, but I definitely get that in the mouthfeel. You know, so the, it's, the from, yes. it's from the Neport family. There is yeah. definitely yeah. a DNA yeah. in this product, which is fabulous. Uh, well done. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Yes. Great well job. Done. Oh, I'm, Guys, I'm, I'm very happy with cheers. it. Hey. Cheers. Cheers. cheers with some and tea. God bless you all. God bless you all. I hope you've enjoyed the tasting. Hello, Marlene. <laughs> I also saw salt, salt, salt in it.